Hello there, this is Dr. Ridwan and today I am going to talk about two very important blood grouping systems that is used for safe blood transfusion. Before we go into further discussions, let's talk about antigen and antibody. Antigens are molecules those which are considered as foreign substances that can initiate immune response in human body. Antibodies are protein molecules those which are produced by the body to neutralize the antigens. The word agglutinate means to adhere or to stick with something. When we talk about blood grouping, we use the term agglutinogen instead of antigen and agglutinin instead of antibody. When agglutinogen and agglutinin react with each other or stick to each other, we call it the agglutination reaction. This is important because the whole blood grouping system is dependent on it. Human body has three types of cells in the blood. Those are namely RBC, WBC and platelets. On the surface of the RBC, we find two types of agglutinogens. They are called agglutinogen A and agglutinogen B. If a person has agglutinogen A on the surface of the RBC, then we say his blood group is A. If a person has agglutinogen B on the surface of the RBC, then we say his blood group is B. There are also people who have both of the antigens on the surface of their RBC and we say their blood group is AB. If a person has none of the antigens on the surface of the RBC then we call his blood group is O. This is why this blood grouping system is called the ABO blood grouping system. This blood grouping system was developed by an Austrian immunologist named Karl Landsteiner in 1901. We now know that why people have different types of blood groups. So the question remains, why is it important? The answer is, it is important because if we transfuse a person with wrong blood group, then he will have a severe post-blood transfusion reaction. His blood will form clots and he may die from the reaction as well. Let's try to understand why this happens. Remember earlier in this video I talked about agglutinogens and agglutinins. Each of the agglutinogen A and B has their corresponding NTA and NTB agglutinins. The presence of NTA and NTB in the blood depends on the presence of the agglutinogen A and agglutinogen B on the red blood cell surface. When agglutinogen A is present on the red blood cell surface, the corresponding NTA antibody will be absent in the blood, but the NTB antibody will be present in the blood. And when agglutinogen B is present, the corresponding NTB antibody will be absent in the blood, but NTA antibody will be present in the blood. When both of the antigens are absent, then both NTA and NTB antibody will be present in the blood. This is why a person with blood group A has agglutinogen A and NTB antibody in the blood. A person with blood group B has agglutinogen B and NTA antibody in the blood. A person with blood group AB has agglutinogen A and B but no NTA or NTB antibodies present in his blood. But a person with the blood group O has both of the NTA and NTB antibodies in his blood. Now, let's imagine Jake has blood group A and Paul has blood group B. If Paul donates blood to Jake, then the following will happen. Paul's B antigen is unknown to Jake, so the NTB antibody in Jake's blood will recognize Paul's B antigen as a foreign substance and an agglutination reaction will happen in Jake's body, which will result in the formation of blood clots in Jake's body and he will probably die from multi-organ failure and excessive destruction of the red blood cells. For the same reason, Jake cannot also donate blood to Paul. Remember we talked about the blood group O, which has neither antigen A nor antigen B on the cell surface of the red blood cell. So what will happen if we transfuse O blood to Jake and Paul? Turns out, due to the absence of the antigens in the O blood, it will not produce any kind of reactions in their bodies. O blood can also be transfused to any person with blood group AB, and of course to the person with the same blood group O. That is why the blood group O is called the universal donor.
Let's imagine Lucy has blood group AB. Can Jake and Paul donate blood to Lucy? Yes, they can because Lucy has both of the antigens in her blood. So it doesn't matter either Jake or Paul donates blood to her. In none of the cases she will develop antibodies. She can also receive blood from O and another person with AB blood group. This is why blood group AB is called the universal recipient. After 36 years of discovery of the AB blood grouping system, Carl Lindsteiner and Alexander S. Wiener in 1937 discovered another type of antigen on the RBC. It was called the antigen D, which has some similarities with the antigen found in rhesus monkey's blood cells. Hence the term rhesus factor was born. And ultimately the blood grouping system was named RH blood grouping system. If a person has the antigen D on the surface of the RBC, we call him positive and if there is no antigen D, we call him negative. For an example, Jake has ABOA and RH positive blood. This can also be called A positive blood. This is important to remember RH negative people doesn't have anti-D antibodies in their blood like the ABO system. So RH negative means the person has neither D antigens nor the anti-D antibodies in their blood. If RH positive blood is given to RH negative individual, a serious RH mismatched blood transfusion reaction will occur resulting in the blood clotting and hemolysis, which will lead to the organ failure and death. From the discussions, we now can summarize it by the following key points. Presence of the antigens or agglutinogens A or B means the person has blood group A or blood group B respectively. Presence of both of the antigens at the same time means the blood group is AB and absence of both of the antigens in the blood means the blood group is O. Corresponding antibodies of the antigens will always be absent in the blood. AB blood group is the universal receiver and O blood group is the universal donor. Presence of the antigen D on the RBC means the person has positive blood and absence means the person has negative blood. RH negative person doesn't have either antigen D or anti-D antibody. I hope you have enjoyed the video. You can let me know what you think of this video in the comment section below. We frequently publish these kinds of videos in this channel. A subscription to our channel from you will let us know that you approve our contents and as always, thanks for watching.